Welcome to the Modern Navine Home Series. In this episode, we're going to be giving you an overview of what we're going to be building, some of the history of the project, and some of the peculiarities of the construction process. We will also touch base on some of the tools and processes that we will be using, as well as the basics on the financials of the project. Let's get into it. In 2018, we had just moved back to Colorado and uh, at the time we were thinking of purchasing a van life to be able to travel around the state, the country and whatnot. The problem we faced with that was the cost of a new van life. It was pretty hefty and uh, for that amount of money we could probably purchase some land. So that was a time when we made the decision to start looking for land. So we effectively started looking for land for about two to three months to build our own home. And then one day, it was basically our last trip of the day, and I found a piece of land on Zillow. And I told him, well, you know, we're halfway there, we might as well just go and check it out. And the moment we got there, we immediately fell in love with this piece of land. It was fully undeveloped, we actually had to sort of climb to get up to the property. But once we were up there, it was just perfect. Yeah, we fell so in love with it. The right there immediately we started looking for realtors we we opened the silo app we started looking for uh, realtor phone numbers started calling one by one and the very first uh, realtor that answered the phone we told them oh we want to purchase this land and effectively one month later the land was ours okay so we closed on the land wonderful news and the question was uh now what we realized we didn't know anything about construction or designing a house so we thought it would be a good idea to bring an architect into the project. One of the main reasons for selecting an architect was to obtain very clear documentation, one for permitting and another for being able to build this house ourselves. It effectively became like a huge house IKEA project. We were out of the ordinary customers for the architect because for one thing we had this DIY requirement that the house should be easy to build. And the second thing was we wanted to build it in two phases. The idea was to have a very small house at the beginning, one that we could um, build very, very quickly and without much money, and we could move in immediately. So once we were on that house without paying rent, we could continue building the rest of the house. About a year went by, uh, the process of the design of the uh, house uh, went through, and uh, we finally had a design for our forever home. And we were very happy with it. Uh, physically and as well uh, with the documents. We were at the end of 2019 at that point and this is a good time to touch base on the financials of the project. So we had been saving money for several years and that allowed us to buy the property with cash which saved us a lot of money and we also paid the architect fees with cash. But by the end of the year we were really low on resources. So we did uh, take a look into loan options for construction, but they were not friendly for uh, owner builders. So we took the decision of postponing construction for a year and use 2020 to keep learning about construction, defining the tools and processes that we were going to use and save money. This year was very beneficial because we were able to uh, do a lot of the design of the house in uh, 3D software. In reality, uh, as a background, I am actually uh, an engineer and I've been an engineer for uh, 20 years. So the general process for designing a new uh, project is to design it on the computer, iterate, try to find the mistakes and then build it in real life. So that is something that you will see along this series. Additionally, we had the brilliant idea of uh, building the house using a 3D printer. So the question at that point was, what is the right scale to build a house? And we came up with the delightful idea of building a house for, that's where, Tia Joe's. So this guy right here is about the same height as Hector. We did actually start printing the house, so check this out. And here you have it. This is the 3D printed model of the foundation of the house. In retrospective, we think it may have been a better idea to do it to either his scale or their scale rather than the GI Joe because this turned out to be huge. It's about four feet wide and if we continue printing the other floors, this would be about three feet tall. 
So at the end we decided to drop the idea of 3D printing the house because we just don't have where to put it. But there is a very important takeaway from this effort. In the original design of the architects, this would have been considered phase one and this would be phase two. So we would move into this area of the house and uh, build the rest from here. But if you notice here, the space is very narrow with respect to the spiral staircase. The spiral staircase is huge. We actually did request this from the architects. So this would have been a huge mistake from our part. But if we had, we looked at this in the drawings and it looked perfectly fine, but by 3D printing this, we were, we were able to notice that this is tremendously large and it would have not been acceptable. Um, let me show you what I mean uh, in the drawings. This is the floor plan of phase one uh, I was referring to. In the original design after receiving the documents from the architects, we had the spiral staircase in, in the middle of the uh, flex space. This flex space would connect to an office on the second floor. And as you can tell from the drawings, it is very difficult to tell that uh, it consumes such a large space from the, uh, from the flex space. We, we were only able to notice this when we did the 3D printing. This is the second space where the uh, spiral staircase connects to the office slash bedroom. As you can tell in this situation, it also occupies a significant amount of space, uh, 10, feet squ uh, 10 square feet from both floors. In the original design, uh, phase one would have been considered uh, the first and the second floor, the flex space and the office bedroom. So the, it's a huge improvement to have removed the uh, spiral staircase. So here we are on the new design. The staircase used to be right here. By removing the staircase, we now had enough space to add a full bathroom in here. And we decided to turn this space into an accessory dwelling unit. What that means is basically an independent, independent apartment where you have your own kitchenette, you have a full bathroom, and in this case, this also has a washer and dryer station. And here we are on the second floor. The staircase used to be on this area. And by removing it now, we have space for two desks instead of one at uh, the office. And this is actually a good point to, um, to give you an overview of the floor plans of the house. Okay, so here is a general view of the house, just to give you an idea. This is the, uh, the street from the town, the driveway comes this way, and then we have the house. The house is about 3,600 square feet. We have the first area here, this is what we call phase one. It's approximately 600 square feet. And then we have the rest of the house. It has a finished basement and then two levels above ground. This is the bottom floor of the house. Uh, this floor is actually below, partially below grade because it's in the mountain. Uh, let me start from left to right. Here we have the mechanical uh, conditioned crawl space. Uh, here's where we receive the electricity and the water from the city. Uh, the, uh, the water and electricity is fed to the main house below grade. This area is where a carport uh, sits on the next floor. Moving on to the main house, uh, we have what we call a flex space. Uh, currently we have it named as a game room, flex, but we also might use this as a, as a shop or a, pretty much as anything else. Um, we broke this area into a TV room and this is uh, basically a huge a spa bedroom with a sauna, tub and a huge shower. Okay, so here we are at the main level of the house. Hector just showed you the, um, the floor below. So here are the stairs, you come up and now you are at the main floor. So the entrance to the house is right here. It's you have a foyer and then you have a powder room. And then we have open space in here. We have this area here is the dining room. Then we have a gourmet kitchen and then we have a living room in this area with uh, an exit to what is going to be an outdoor kitchen. If we come to the left, we have the accessory dwelling unit. This one has a different entrance from the main house. It's completely independent and it has just a living area. This is going to be the bedroom. There, there's going to be a small living room in here, the kitchenette, full bathroom and the washer and dryer. In this area right here, this is the carport. It's, uh, it's covered by the walls of the house, but it's open on the front and open on the back. Okay, so now we're on the third floor. If we move up uh, the stairs, we have a, br a bridge with an opening to the uh, middle floor. 
If we move to the right, we have the uh, main bedroom, uh, the, mas the main closet behind the bed, uh, laundry room, and bedroom. And bathroom, I'm sorry. And then moving up the stairs to the left, we have a family room that we also like to call a sand living room. It's probably the most beautiful room in the house. It will get the most light. It has some nice skylights and whatnot. And it also faces to an exterior deck that can be complemented, that can complement nicely the sunroom in the summer. Further to the left, we have the uh, work from home office that hopefully we'll be able to do more often now. Uh, two desks and then a bathroom for the uh, work from home office. To finalize this quick overview, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the site plan of the property. So this one right here is the street from the town. This is the entrance to the property via our private driveway. The house is going to be on this area right here. We have a private septic system that is going to be down here. Water from the city is going to come this way into the mechanical crawl space. Electricity is running in the back of the property, so it's going to come in this way. We don't have gas at the property, so these are all the services that we are going to need. To finish up, I'm going to give you uh, some of the rundown of the processes that we're going to be following through this series. In the uh, downtime in 2020, while we were saving, I also developed uh, this uh, topographic map from the surveyor. This will help us uh, identify different locations of the house, as you will see in uh, future videos. Throughout this series, I'm going to be showing you the different details of how to assemble different components of the house, such as, for example, French drains, foundations, slabs, um, interior drains, and uh, exterior insulation and whatnot. I would also like to take this space as a place where we can share and uh, review details as a community. Maybe you can give me better feedback than what I have developed. As you can see, there are many complexities to this house, from uh, metal framing so that we can achieve a lot of this open space, to uh, cantilevers, to below grade, to a very complex foundation as you can see here. So. In this uh, series, I will be doing videos sim uh, that will be called uh, Look Aheads, where we will be analyzing certain parts of the house and we will be building them virtually. And then I will show you in a future video how we built them in, in reality. This video would not be complete without introducing you to Efficient Build. Efficient Build is uh, the company we founded because we have been enjoying the home building process so much that we would like to continue building homes in the future. The name Efficient Build comes from the fact that we will be performing a lot of our builds virtually. So our intention is to uh, build mock-ups virtually rather than physically in the essence of saving money. Similarly, we will be building virtually such that we can optimize our inventory and know precisely what to order, when to order it. So that is essentially what Efficient Build is. and. Uh, it is, it is the company that will be presenting to you all of this series. Okay, let's wrap this up. This has been a super quick introduction to the Modern Alpine House series. We have given you a lighting overview of where we have already been and where we are heading. And at this point, we are extremely excited. We have received our building permits and we are about to start construction. A lot of what you've seen today, you will probably see in significantly more detail in the future. Uh, as part of this YouTube channel, we would also love to build a community where we can share our experiences, our mistakes, and hopefully you will share your experiences as well with us. We are super excited to be launching this YouTube channel and we are delighted to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye! Bye.